Every week, there is a new AI model drop-in, and of course, everyone jumps in, tests the API, and builds something cool. Then, a week later, another company drops a new model, and now you're switching APIs again, rewriting code and chasing updates, and it becomes a mess. In this video, we're going to explore how AI SDK fixes that, so you can build it once, swap providers easily, and focus on shipping great things. First, let's take a look at how we normally set things up. Here's a basic example of how we use OpenAI API. We import the client, call the model, and get the response back. Everything works, life is good. Then, one day, your manager goes, hey, Anthropic just dropped a new model, can we switch to that? You think, sure, easy enough, swap the SDK, tweak the function, and done. But that's only true in the beginning. As your app grows and those calls get scattered across components and services, changing providers turn into a real headache. First, there is inconsistency. Each provider works a bit differently, so you're always tweaking things to get them working. Then there is maintenance. APIs change, SDKs update, and suddenly your code breaks in five places. And finally, there's a learning curve. Each new provider has its own quirks and you have to figure out. This is exactly what Vercel's AI SDK is trying to simplify. Now let's see how it looks like if you use AI SDK from the start. Same OpenAI example, but now we are using generate text from AI SDK. Clean, simple and consistent. We import generate text, call it with the OpenAI model and that's it. Much less tied to the specific vendor. Now imagine the manager coming back and says, okay, let's switch to Anthropic. With AI SDK, all we need to do is change the model import and update the model name. That's it. No deep refactoring, no broken code, and no relearning any SDKs. Just a simple, clean swap. Now that we understand why AI SDK is so powerful, let's start exploring its core functionality. Starting with generate text. At its bare bones, hear how simple it is. You import generate text, you import a provider like OpenAI, you pass it the model and the prompt, and that's it clean and minimal. But if you want to step it up and give a better user experience, we can also add a system prompt. A system prompt helps guide the model's behavior, setting the tone or giving a specific instructions before the user even says anything. Another thing you can add is parameters, like max tokens, top P and temperature. These parameters give you control over the style and creativity of the model's output, letting you fine tune the tone and flexibility depending on what you need. Next, we have messages. Messages allow you to maintain conversation history, which is super important for chats that need context. Instead of starting from scratch every time, the model understands what has been said so far. And with the AI SDK, handling messages is extremely simple. Now for probably the most important feature you'll tap into is tools. Let's take a look at how we build a tool and then we'll incorporate it into generate text function. First, we create a tool object using the tool helper function. This sets up a foundation for what the tool will do. Then, we add a description to the tool. A simple explanation of what the tool is supposed to do. This helps the model understand when and how to use it. Next, we add parameters. We define them using Zod object. In our case, it's a ticker field. Using Zod here is important because it tells the model exactly what input it needs and what it should look for before it can call the tool. Then comes the execute function, the action. This is usually an async function that takes in the input, like our ticker, call an API, and then returns the result back to the model. Finally, we plug everything together. We pass the tool object in the tools parameter inside generate text. The tools parameter takes an object where you can define one or multiple tools, and that's it, you're ready to go. Now, the model can call your tool whenever it needs to. So we've covered multiple important parameters. Of course, there are tons more you can explore in the docs, but for this crash course, these are the essentials. Now let's take a look at what you actually get back when you call generate text. Now, if you console log the results, you'll get a full object with a lot of information. We're going to focus on a few key parts that are super helpful, but I definitely recommend trying it out for yourself and exploring everything that's available. Let's start with the first and most obvious one, text. Text is your plain output, basically the model's direct response to your prompt. Two other important fields are reasoning and reasoning details. Reasoning is the model's output process, why it made the choice it did. 
Reason in detail goes deeper, it's usually an object showing the steps the model took to reach that output. Now make sure you're using our reasoning models. In our case, it's Sonnet 3.7. If not, these fields will return undefined. Now let's move on to a super useful part of the results, sources. Sources are extremely important, especially when you want your LLM to ground its answers based on real world information. But here's the catch. Sources only appear when the model has access to search the web. In our case, we'll be using Google Gemini 2.0 Flash. All we need to do is add the use search grounding option to the model and boom, we've got internet access. Once enabled, the model will give you back a sources array, a list of links or references it's pulled from. You can easily print those out and display them however you like. In our case, I have chosen to print the title and the URL. Another thing you can get back is usage. The usage object tells you how many tokens were used for the prompt, for the completion and the total combined. This is extremely useful, especially when you're monitoring costs, optimizing prompt sizes, or just keeping an eye on how much you're spending during LLM calls. It's a small thing, but critical if you plan to scale or build real products around this. Now, let's take a quick step back and return to the basics of generate text. Here we removed everything, no system prompt, no parameters, no tool, just the model and the prompt. Now, when we console log the output, if the request is too long, you'll notice it takes few seconds for the full response to appear. This is fine if you're summarizing content or rewriting emails, but if you're building a real-time app or chatbot, this is bad UX. This is where stream text comes in. Just like the name suggests, it streams the text as it's generated. To do it, all we have to do is replace generate text with stream text, and that's it. Same setup, just a different function. Now, because stream text gives us a text stream, we need to await it properly. We use a for await loop to read each chunk as it arrives and then console log it out. Now, if you look at what happens, you'll see the response being printed out word by word instead of waiting for the full completion. Way better UX, especially for chatbots or real time applications. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you can control how the output gets streamed. This is still experimental, but you can pass in the experimental transform option and use the smooth stream helper. You can tweak the delay and choose how the output comes in, by word, line or more. This gives you more control over how it shows up on the screen. So far we've been streaming simple text responses, but sometimes as developers we want even more control. Not just the output, but how it's structured. This is where generate object comes in. Just like before, all we have to do is change the function. Instead of generate text or stream text, we use generate object. But this time, we add a schema. The schema, built using Zod, defines exactly what the model should output. If you console log the output, you'll see exactly the structure you defined. Simple, clean and predictable. This is incredibly useful compared to many other APIs where you have to manually parse or guess the structure. By default, the output will come back as an object. But if you want, you can customize it even further by adding an output parameter and setting it to an array. Now you're defining exactly the form you want your data in. You can even push this one step further with enums. This allows you to restrict the models to specific values. Perfect for classification tasks where you want clear, discrete outputs. Now, you probably guessed it, but if you want to stream the object instead of waiting for it all at once, all you have to do is swap the generate object with stream object. Then, just use the for await loop to handle each part of the stream as it comes in. Same flow, same pattern, super simple. All right, so far we've covered generate text, stream text, generate object and stream object. But before we get too deep, let's take a quick moment to revisit when you should use each one. First up, generate text. Use generate text when you want a simple, full response. It's perfect for summarizing content, rewriting emails or documents, and getting quick answers without needing live interaction. Next is stream text. Use stream text when you want to improve UX in real-time applications, like chatbots, live writing apps, or anything where waiting feels bad. It stream words as they come, keeping the user engaged. Then we have generate object. Use generate object when you want structured, reliable outputs, where you can control exactly what fields the LLM should return. Great for forms, workflows, and apps where you need precise data. And lastly, stream object. Use stream objects when you want structured output, but also want to stream it piece by piece for better performance and for faster partial results. 
especially useful for dealing with big detailed responses. So far, everything we covered was text, but today's AI models, they are multimodal, and Vercel's AI SDK is fully equipped to handle that too. So let's jump into some multimodal capabilities. We'll start with images. The beautiful part is the code stays super consistent. Same structure you've already seen, we've just changed the function to the model to a multimodal model. Minimal changes, maximum results. Now let's visit a few extra parameters you can tweak. First up is the provider options. Some providers let you pick the quality level of the generated image. Think standard or high quality. Next, it's size. You can control how big you want generated image to be. More flexibility depending on your app needs. And one more thing is the number of images. You can control how many images you want the model to generate in one shot. Simply use the end parameter to decide how many images you want to output. Now let's move into speech. Again, this is ridiculously simple. Same game, change the function, change the model, and you're generating speech instead of images. When generating speech, you can tweak a few settings. One is voice. Choose different voices depending on the vibe you want. Then the speed. Control how fast or slow the speech sounds. And lastly, the output format. Pick the file that you want, mp3, wave, etc. All right, before we close out, there's two more core functions I want to show you. But first, let's quickly talk about embeddings and why they matter. Let's start with what embeddings are. You give the model text and it turns that text into a bunch of numbers. We call them vectors. Those vectors help the model understand meaning and relationships between the words. Think of it like giving words coordinates in a map. So the model knows which words are close in meanings. That's what embeddings do. They give text structure and context that machine can actually use. Embedding shines in many different ways. Semantic search, finding relevant results based on meaning and not exact words, think Google search. Recommendation systems, think Netflix and Spotify, finding similar shows, songs or products. Clustering, again, think Spotify, like grouping things like playlists. Classifications for sorting items into categories. And anomaly detections, think banks, where you find outliers in a sea of normal data. Now that we know what embeddings are, how do you use them in Vercel's AI SDK? Super simple, just call embed. It takes one input and returns the embedding. Now, if you want to embed multiple pieces of text at once, use embed many. You pass in an array of text and return an array of embeddings. To get the best result with the AI SDK, here's a few best practices. First, use strong models for better tool calling and behavior. Make sure you keep the tool count low, ideally five of you. Use simple, flat schemas and describe tools clearly using the describe function. Make sure you give the models a few examples of what good output looks like. And lastly, check the results.warnings as providers may flag issues with your setup or models that could affect your quality. And this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you found it helpful, make sure you like, subscribe and hit the bell for more content. And I'll see you in the next one.